the uh, Central Business Architecture Committee meeting. Um, we're going to start by opening up for public comment in case there's anyone who is not here for the um, presentation of the ramp at 6 to 8 Strong Avenue. Okay, <laughs> then we'll move on to um, the review of an addition for patio deck ADA ramp at 6 to 8 Strong Avenue. Northampton, map ID 32A154. And we'll ask the applicants to come up and present what you have. You can just introduce yourselves. And yeah, you're free to move on up here. You can go up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, close. I mean, as long Friendly. as the audience can see. <laughs> We figured we'd draw a crown. Oh, um, that's heavy. Um, so I'm Daniel McColgan, um, originally from Springfield, currently residing in South Hadley. Um, we are opening up a specialty coffee, tea, and sandwich shop at the former location of Kathy's Diner at 68 Strong Ave. Um, My name is Isaac Weiner. Um, I'm from Chatsworth, Pennsylvania. Um, since we're not very many of us, could you come closer? Yes, I'm right. going deaf in my old age, and even with hearing aids, if, if you, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you from that. Yes. Mine's in the shop. Mine is in the So yeah, we are here to essentially go over um, the ADA ramp that we need to build for the space, um, given various requirements, um, because it is more than a foot above grade. It's a 30-inch rise. Um, to you guys for seeking approval um, to get this up and running. Um, we think it would be an amazing addition just to have another ADA accessible space in Northampton because so many places, because it's so historic and construction is a challenge in those instances, um, there's really not a lot of places that people in wheelchairs and um, with other disabilities can really access and utilize. Um, and we think that there's a great opportunity to really welcome that community into our space. Um, as you can see here, it's currently just an old driveway um, with kind of spotty, unlevel pavement. Um, people are using it more as like a turnaround space on Strong Avenue, which actually kind of poses some danger um, <laughs> for both the people driving and uh, people walking down the street. Pass on the sidewalk yeah. for sure. um, and so we really want to make it look a lot nicer. We have these 3D renderings here. Uh, we want to do just a level patio um, right in front with the ADA ramp wrapping around the back to go to the new main entrance um, because we don't have enough frontage on the front of the building to get the ramp up to those doors and they're also structural and very, very narrow and very, very short so they would never meet code um, and because we can't increase that ceiling height without destroying the integrity of the building, um, we're moving the main entrance to the side door um, which you can see right there. Yeah, and then we've got kind of examples of the color scheme we're going for. We want it to uh, match the space without kind of being too out there and drawing too much attention to itself because it is just a ramp. Um, this first sample is what we mm -hmm. want to use for the ramp flooring itself. Yeah. Um, and then this big, big stone is what the uh, pavers on the actual deck patio area are going to be. That's a little heavy there. Um, and so that'll end up replacing the, the, ass, the current asphalt. That material just because it's not natural wood, which over time will bow, and it'll be a challenge for people to actually maneuver up the ramp, which is the whole purpose of the ramp. Um, so that'll stay nice and level and really hold its structural integrity um, for many, many years to come. Um, and then, in terms of the aesthetic of the space, there's currently already um, kind of raw iron fencing going up and around. We don't want to use raw iron necessarily, but we do want um, the balusters here to match that aesthetic. Um, and just kind of have more of like a deck feel as opposed to some ADA ramps are just poor concrete and then those big metal railings and they're kind of an eyesore. Um, and we want to really make it, again, a welcoming and inviting space um, as opposed to just something we did out of necessity. Um, so the railing's not going to be wrought iron, will it be a metal railing? Uh, no, we intend to do wood and paint it kind of a... For the for the ADA railing um, on both sides of oh, the railing and the... That will be metal. The, the handrail will yes. be... Yes. But be the actual guard or vertical will be painted wood. Correct. Correct. That, the, 
the two hand railings we have to have on both sides uh, are probably going to be are going to be a pipe and flange um, up to code ADA like a compliant railing system for that, and then the balusters are going to be it's right currently pr uh, pressurized lumber that we will then paint ideally this color uh, a dark gray something that matches that, mm -hmm. that uh, sample right there. Um, the railing that you're showing right now doesn't have any intermediate posts. I imagine you might have that to support them. Yes, mm -hmm. um, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised it doesn't get on there. The, there will be railings on both sides, which are, are mandated on this side, on the brick wall here, and on this side, that will be um, attached directly. Uh, and then on the other side, we'll have periodic posts, which you can, you can see a couple of them in here. Mm -hmm. um, that'll support the weight of the ramp as well as the hand drawing. Um, do you tend to have seating or anything out on the patio? Um, we do. We want to have um, not we don't want to crowd people in there necessarily, but some nice just kind of outdoor cafe seating. Um, likely very simple black um, kind of folding tables with matching chairs. Um, Similar to what uh, Nourish has, I think, outside. Yeah, yeah like that style that they mm -hmm. have the smaller tables. Permanent something up at the end of business, we can haul into the shop and lock up and mm -hmm. keep from just floating around town. And then for um, hotter summer days, we've been thinking about doing not umbrellas in the middle of the tables necessarily, um, but kind of like a couple, maybe like three, just like off to the side umbrellas that'll cover a couple of tables at once. So it'll be a nice space. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. We want to increase the open space and everything like that because right now it's just not usable unless you have a parking permit for that driveway. And you're not making any changes to the existing exterior of the building at all? No. But We've you, been using the old sign. <laughs> you are using the old sign? Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll be, is it, doesn't it still say Cappies? Uh, no, yeah. um, <laughs> it doesn't it say anything. Cappies. It says Pepsi. Oh, okay. um, so we're using the, the frame. We got a new um, sheet, polycarbonate sheet oh, okay. to go in with our business name. Um, the front stairs that go up to the existing doors, you're closing off the doors, but right. you're not taking them away. That image implies that they Yes, so the um, person that did this rendering misunderstood. We said that the doors were going to act as windows, and he okay. put them in as windows. Okay. Um, so that staircase will still be there. Those doors are currently sealing, um, again, because we cannot make them ADA compliant, and right. the code necessitates that all of our entrances are ADA compliant. Sure. I understand. I, I'm just making sure I understand the Is scope you're, of what you're, you're doing. You're, you're, you're leaving the stairs. Correct. And the doors will be there too. They'll just be sealed shut. There won't be any handles on the outside. part of the aesthetic of the original design. Exactly. Exactly. Like you're going to snow at the hands. You know, we would we love, love to be able to use those doors, but we, I don't think that's in the cards for us. Well, where it's not enough run for you to do that. Um, Anybody else have any comments or questions? I have, a, I have a question about the patio space. So the property line um, goes all the way to the wall of the Strong Avenue block, that rather building, the yep. building. Um, and um, do, would you, do you see any issues with once you put your patio in and um, you have um, the ramp there if the curb was closed um, so that cars wouldn't ramp up on the sidewalk there. So one of like one of our bigger visions, I think they refer to those as aprons or something yeah. in the sidewalk, would be to remove that and then we would be able to actually get another metered parking spot on that strip. Until that point, um, it is a concern with that apron there because cars, yeah. I, what we're hoping is once we make a big deal about it and it isn't it's been empty for about five years, so I think people are just accustomed to using that. Once we light it appropriately and, and make a big deal about it, we hope that that'll mitigate that turnaround and couple of planter boxes. Exactly. exactly. I mean, the city could go, I mean, you could, you may not need to wait that long. The city could, you could take it to the Parking Transportation Committee. They could, um, I think they'd have to, I th they can install a meter sooner than later. I don't know how many parking spaces you would gain. Maybe it's just one. I think, I think it would just be a little yeah. one. Um, but it, 
at any rate, I, you know, I think that would be a good thing, safer, and yeah. obviously creates a you know better interaction between the sidewalk and your activities. Are you planning any outdoor lighting, or is it lit up by street lamps? Uh, we have street lamps. Um, Strong App has the nicer kind of really you know, style oh, street yeah. lamps. Um, there's one right at <laughs> uh, it's right on Death Drive, right? Yeah, above our door, I assume I will we'll have a, a motion activated light. Um, so as people are coming up and we, the ramp, we have to keep well lit. Um, so you don't feel like you're going into a dark corner of the space. Um, so we'll adequately light that whole area, but not like overbearing light, I would say. Um, and you said you're going to attach the railing uh, on the brick building? you have permission from them to do that? So our um, landlord, the owner of the building, is, I believe, on the board of trustees for that building. building. Oh. Um, and he's been communicating with them. And uh, the jeweler right next door is actually, every time we see him, he walks by and he's are you open yet? He doesn't <laughs> have him to the corner to get his coffee. And I, um, he really likes the idea of making that a space where people can kind of gather and hang out, uh, because that'll increase his business if people are more aware. Because right now, Strong Ave on that side seems to be more of just kind of throughway. Mm -hmm. um, and we really want people to start pausing and appreciate appreciating Strong Ave and Pearl Street because it is such a historic street mm -hmm. um, that's been there for such a long time and has a lot of great businesses that are opening up uh, up and down the block. If there is a, an issue with attaching to that building, the solution would be to move this over to get posts an inch and to get the posts through. We um, we made the landing at the top of the um, ramp run at the top. The stairs uh, large enough to accommodate any small adjustments that we might need to make to incorporate those um, things like that. It's, it's seven feet, and I think it actually only needs to be like five, five feet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, picky architect here, but uh, there isn't a whole lot of detail on the railings um, in terms of the actual handrails. You have mm -hmm. the guard, but there are handrail extensions that. Yep, so it'll come 12, 12 inches out from yeah. the end of the ramp. Yeah. Um, and that's not really my jurisdiction here on this committee, but it does make the drawings appear different. Yes. Um, and uh, and like I said, the intermediate posts, I think, would actually add a little bit to break up the mm -hmm. drawings mm -hmm. um, rather than one continuous ramp. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and I'm a little hesitant about the idea, the wood um, balusters, are they like one by one, or is so the balusters are the vertical mm -hmm. the pieces? I think they're typically like a one by one, absolutely. Okay. Um, just being in a sort of semi-urban environment that you might want to consider metal, I realize that that's more expensive, but it um, will be more durable. Instead of the that for balusters and that whole thing. Um, and like you said, it would. I think it doesn't have to be wrought iron. It could be aluminum. Um, it'll, I think it would tie in better with what is currently there and, and be a more urban friendly. It would echo the chrome a little bit that we have right. on the right. Yeah. yeah. I think the the aesthetic of the structure is industrial, and. The aesthetic of what you're proposing is a ramp is more suburban ranch house. And so I think that uh, using metal, even if it's just a compliant pipe rail, uh, I think that would look a little bit better with the structure and not create a, a sense of contrast of residential versus downtown industrial. The uh, it's a great building. I, I think that complement it with the metal, it would look a lot better. The other side of the building has a service ramp um, that has like a black pipe and flange yeah. piping, which we could definitely echo on the other side. Absolutely. Absolutely. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> the maintenance on that's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's the other thing painting um, pressure treated wood is not ideal. We were trying to do a couple of tests. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think it would it would hold up better and look better mm -hmm. um, aesthetically. I think it that with that material it also um, my only other comment is, you know, having uh, the open space below the ramp and landing is an opportunity for trash and things to gather. So if you thought about some sort of insect screening or something just to uh, 
allow air to circulate under there, but keep the trash out. Mm -hmm. um, so that the tricky thing about this whole ramp around is we end at about eight inches, if not a foot back, right from the public sidewalk, mm -hmm. uh, which we were really, really happy that we fit it in um, <laughs> on the property. But we definitely, I think it got cut off here. We have some underneath area to to the ramp that we could definitely put insect screening or something to mitigate that. We're both clean freaks in terms of running the space, <laughs> so any trash outside will will negatively detract from us as well. Curiosity, do you have a name yet? We do. Um, we filed our DEA certificate. <laughs> um, we are going to be Familiars Coffee and Tea. Um, familiar? Familiars, yes. Um, so it's had so many different names um, over the years, <laughs> and it's a very familiar space to everyone. Um, and then Northampton has a tendency to enter into the niche food market, um, and we want to be able to provide a menu that is very familiar to people where you know all of the ingredients on your sandwich. It's always fun to try new things, but um, you know, for most days of the week, people want staples, like chicken salad, BLTs, things like that. Um, so we want the menu to feel familiar, we want the space to feel familiar. Uh, we really just wanna... Do you have a um, prospect for an opening date? If everything goes well here, um, <laughs> I think we're looking at ideally the beginning of April um, would, be, would be preferred for us skip the harsh month of February um, and get yeah, people while they're yeah. hanging out in town as the weather turns around a little bit. I mean, anticipate the construction on that lasting about three or four weeks at the most. <coughs> Straight up yeah. construction. Exactly. As long as you can get the post in the ground. Yes. <laughs> well, that <laughs> depends on the temperature. Yeah. Yes. And so we, can't, we would have to wait for a thaw. <coughs> and, and we did have that nice heat wave a couple weeks. <laughs> still holding out to some of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, it's just, we're, we're just really excited to, again, create this outdoor space. Um, right now, there's a tendency for people to kind of use this as like a, a city litter box in a way. Um, there's We find trash in the corners. People are tagging the side of the building still because they don't realize that it's used. Um, so we really want to have that outdoor space feel like part of the business so that people know it's in use and mm -hmm. don't litter and throw other things in there. It'll also help pull people around the corner to come in. You can see the building from halfway up the street uh, by the, the codes road shop. And so you you can really, it's a, it's a beacon for the rest of Strong Avenue. You see it and then it pulls you into the rest of the whole place. Um, I guess I would like to see a, a, a little more detail um, and it might suggestion might be to um, have the chair review the final details, approve it as proposed conceptually, but I'd like to see a little more detail. So you want to see the detail that would show the um, intermediate folks and the um, final the material extensions. selection for the balusters? Um, the intermediate post handrail extensions. And, and just confirmation of what material you're going to in other words, we need a record of what it is that we recommended and what it is that you're doing. And that's not a record of it yet. So. It's more conceptual at this point. It gives yeah. us a good idea, but it's not exactly what's going to be built. Um, and I think the building inspector would ask for some of those details anyway when you go for the permit. So then a condition it would be uh, before they apply for building Sidewalk, or would that ideally be entirely on our uh, property? 
ideally it's on on your property but I believe that you can um, so that it doesn't impede on people walking down the sidewalk that you can bend the ends around mm -hmm. it just have you just have to have those 12 inch extension um, so I know I think in your plan you are eight inches yeah, so it would be four inches yeah I mean four inches beyond is actually probably fine to have that extension out I don't, I don't know if the building, I don't know if we approve projections into the permanent projections into the public right of way. Mm -hmm. um, we can scoot that back. We have the. But if have, you wrap it, I mean, that might be the solution. Um, the other thing is, um, I don't know how wide that is there. But I, I think I would, uh, I wouldn't, I guess I would just wouldn't um, assume that that would, that the city would sign off on a projection. So, yeah, if you can make it fit, so make maybe what you do is you pull it back so it's like um, 19 6 or mm -hmm. something, exactly, exactly. and then you do 10 6 on the other ramp. Mm -hmm. exactly. And then you're clear. Yeah, we can do that. And then, so you want like a another rendering of the actual materials and with the and metal. it doesn't have to be a full rendering it could just be a you know an elevation if that's mm -hmm. easier um, it looks like whoever's doing this is doing 3d modeling it may be just as easy for them to do mm -hmm. it in 3d absolutely and just confirmation of what material you're going to use i like the metal idea project a little bit late to have done <laughs> so but it is a it's an interesting and really nice there's additional historical elements on the interior construction that actually um, came from a paper mill in Holyoke um, so we have 150 year old solid oak wood paneling along the walls um, it's going to be really nice I'm sorry so you you said there's some original paneling left that was on the walls okay yeah um, but the the original booths and things are gone. Yeah, they were gone. Yeah, they were they were gone when we we got there. Mm -hmm. um, we have the old hood as a decorative piece in the front, which is It's really really cool industrial '65. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a very fun new life to it. Hope it becomes very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So we will get that information to you as soon as we can. Yeah. Thank you. 